Welcome to Profiling Evil Insights. I'm Mike King, and for the past 40 years, I've worked with and trained law enforcement agencies around the globe. Today, we're gonna to talk about the June 2020 murder of two women in Tallahassee, Florida, by an ex-convict named Aaron Glee. To solve the case, investigators would need to examine a number of crime scene locations as part of their investigation. In criminal cases, there can be several different crime scenes. They are first, the initial contact site or, or the location where the victim and the perpetrator first make contact with each other. In some cases, the victim may not even be aware that the contact's been made, but the suspect certainly is. The second is the crime scene location. This is the actual location where the assault or the violation occurs. Now, in cases where there are multiple assaults for the uh, crime, there could be multiple crime scenes. And finally, the disposal site or the location where a victim is either dropped off or in the case of a homicide, the body is disposed. On Saturday, June 6th, Aaron Glee Jr. approached a 19-year-old woman named Alutuin Selo at a uh, bus stop in downtown Tallahassee. Salau, who had been active in several local Black Lives Matter protests, was declared missing on Tuesday, June 9th. And with Monday's news, Sancho in disbelief, hoping her friend's compassion lives on. She cared so deeply about every person and you knew it was genuine. You knew she wasn't just saying it to make you feel better. It's like she really believed in you and everything that she was fighting for. You can click on the link on your screen to review my video that describes the victim risk continuum and you might find it kind of interesting to look at what's going on in this case. But let's go back to Glee. Glee had a troubled past that included arrests dating back as far as 1992. His recent arrests though suggest that Glee was becoming increasingly violent. Now, the video footage showed Salau and, uh, and Glee at this bus stop in Tallahassee where he approaches her and they have a nearly one-hour conversation. I'm not sure if it was the first time the two met or if they knew each other, but eventually a white Toyota passenger vehicle pulls alongside them and they get inside. The vehicle, we would later learn, belonged to a 75-year-old woman named Victoria Sims. 75-year-old Vicki Sims, kind-hearted all her life. A wonderful person. AARP Florida's Dave Bruins telling me Sunday Sims had been helping others for decades. She was a passionate advocate for older Americans on so many fronts. Her volunteer work extending to feed the hungry. In the past, she had actually driven Glee from place to place. And according to a probable cause statement that police issued at his uh, arraignment, Glee had telephoned her shortly before she picked the pair up. So let's pause for just a moment in this overview to discuss the first crime scene, the initial contact site. The bus stop would be considered this initial contact site. Although some experts might argue that they could have met somewhere else previously, but from my perspective, it appears that this really is the initial contact site. Now, since we're focusing on Glee's criminal episode, we can theorize that the bus stop is also the initial contact site between Glee and Victoria Sims. Glee did have a previous relationship with Sims, evident by reports from close family members who said the public activist and volunteer would often give Glee rides in her car. But circumstantial evidence shows that Glee called Sims shortly before she arrived at this bus stop. It, you can incidentally go to the link above and find out more about circumstantial evidence by looking at that video on our Forms of Evidence video. After getting into Sims' car, they drove to Glee's residence on Monday Road. Detectives finding her and Salau's bodies hours later. We are still waiting for a police affidavit to provide more details into what led them to the home on 2110 Monday Road. Now, physical and circumstantial evidence recovered by police suggests that this was actually the crime scene. It's here that Glee murders the two women. 
The location of the crime scene is really important. This is where the actual homicide occurred. It's significant because it represents a place where the offender somehow feels safe. The location is chosen because it's functional, but it also provides the offender with the time and the concealment he needs to be successful. In cases where it appears that there's some form of organization, the location's chosen because it also improves the predator's chance of remaining anonymous and getting away with murder. Sim's body was discovered by police in a bedroom in Glee's home. Her wrists and ankles were bound behind her back and her bloody body was covered with a sheet. Salau's body was found about 200 feet from the home, buried under some leaves. This case is so intriguing that I'm wondering if it might make sense for us to explore it in more detail in the future, particularly to talk about the victim selection process and who the preferential victim in this case is. But for now, we're going to just stop and, and focus on, again, location. Let me know, though, if you'd like to go into it more, more fully. Now, the location where the bodies are discovered represents the disposal site or the place where the offender uh, drops off the victim or leaves the body. This disposal site is relevant to the suspect's thoughts, their feelings, the emotions they're experiencing, and it reveals his association to the area. By examining it, we're able to better understand the organizational mindset of the offender. Glee certainly didn't take time to hide the bodies or clean up the evidence in those murders. Instead, he purchases a one-way ticket to get out of town and then tries to flee. Well, from the outside looking in, it appears that Tallahassee police conducted a great investigation. They took the missing persons reports on both women seriously. It's evidenced by their public postings of the missing person bulletins and the media reports about their investigation. They identified and investigated all of the crime scenes effectively, and then they leveraged technology and experience to locate the victims and quickly apprehend the fleeing subject. Hey, thanks a lot for uh, listening in today. You know, we're really new at this and we're trying to give you content that makes sense. And we are listening to the uh, critiques that you have. Some of you can be pretty darn brutal, but we're always finding a nugget of valuable insight in each of those. So please keep the information coming and the responses coming. And thanks for giving us a shot. I hope that we can do things that make sense to you. And please send me a couple of uh, ideas from time to time about cases you think would be interesting to explore, or maybe just questions that you might have about the criminal investigative process. So until we get together next time, thanks a lot and uh, have a great day. And please remember that every community has a cadre of professionals who are standing by to ensure your safety. If you're being victimized by someone, get to a safe place and call your local law enforcement agency, your physician, or your mental health provider. And until we get together the next time, please uh, be safe.